Hi, and welcome to this tutorial video on Google Forms. We're going to break this video down in different segments. The first segment we're going to take a look at is just the overall way of just creating a Google Form using your Google Chrome browser on your iPad and then logging into your Google Drive. As you see here, I've already logged in to our Google Apps for Education account. I'm going to click on the red create here on the left hand side. It will pop up a menu of options to choose. We're going to go with form. And now you'll see that as this loads, the new layout and design is going to be a little bit different with a lot of functionality that's actually improved it in the eyes of some people some other folks on Twitter are still kind of not sure about it but hopefully this video will help provide you some insight on what you can do with it we're gonna close the theme piece as you noticed obviously when we chose form it creates this and all of a sudden wants us to choose a theme right away but you don't have to do that at this moment. So we're just going to choose cancel. Now we're going to walk you through a few things. Let's start with the title. It comes up and allows you to change the name of the title just as before. As you'll notice, when it puts the title at the top, it also puts the title on your form. And as you kind of scroll through, there's the settings, here's your form question, and the new piece they've added is instead of a second sample question, it's going to be a confirmation page, what they would see at the end after submitting the responses. And we'll get to those in some of the other sections to this tutorial video. But we're just going to go through, for the moment, the rest of our headings here at the top. Under File, you're going to see most of the same options where you can share, send form, or under New, you'll notice that you can create some of the options, once again, Document, Presentation, Spreadsheet, but you could also choose From Template. Nice way of finding some templates. If you had some other previous things you can open, you can. Uh, make a copy. In the past, usually if we went to use the same form but wanted to be able to desegregate the responses without any influence from the others, we would be able to do that through making a copy. But that has changed and greatly improved in this new format. And then for those of you that like to put your forms into a blog post, a website, a wiki, the embed code that you would use is right here. So you can see you can adjust the width and the height of it and then there's your code. Under edit is basically going to be the same ones. Undo, redo, which is the same as your arrows here. Under view, live form, the theme. So there's a couple ways of getting to the theme. You could view the live form just as you see here or with the way we'll do it in a, in a little bit. Under insert you're going to see the different types of questions section header and page break. Those of you not familiar with section header or a page break a lot of the time those folks that are creating a form as in creating a self grading quiz and they want you to jump around from question to question based off of a response. So for example, if I'm asking a student a history question about a certain time period or a culture, if they miss that question referring to that culture, it may then jump them to another part that has some other questions referring to that culture to see if they just made a mistake or if they truly did not understand it. So that's what's some nice parts about being able to jump around. Responses. This is going to have some new options. 
Under accepting responses, this is the same as before, where you can check mark it to accept or remove the check mark and no longer accept responses. Summary of responses does the same thing to display. Here is one of the new pieces, or actually these next three items are really what dresses up the new format. Choose a response destination. Basically, if you remember before, in Google Forms, when you created a form, it automatically created you the spreadsheet. In the new format, it does not do that. And we'll get into that later on. Uh, get a pre-filled URL. That's basically your survey URL with the answers pre-filled, and then they choose what's different. And then the last one, delete all responses. It will clear out any of the responses in your Google Form. Now, you may ask, uh, why do I want to do that? Well, we'll talk about this later in the video, but I want you to keep in mind that you will be able to, let's say, put a form out there with the exact same questions, send it to students, and send it to adults. Maybe you send it to one class period and another class period, and you want the results in different pages of the spreadsheet so it's easier to desegregate the data and then also compare the different hours. That's what's really nice about that response destination. And then finally, there's your help. Your arrows we talked about, again, just choose theme. The menu pops up. So if we were to scroll down, let's say, and I want to use that theme, I'm um, choose book classics and you could tell that by the blue rectangle around the image <clears throat> and I'll choose OK and now the theme says books classic so you know that des uh, response destination we just talked about that and we'll show that to you and then view live form this is your live preview where you could actually interact with it and we'll actually use that in another segment demonstrating Okay, in this section of the tutorial video with creating Google Forms on an iPad, we're going to go through and create actual questions and explain the different options or movements within the new setup. As you see here, we have the ability to require people to log in to complete surveys, but if you're wanting to collect information or responses from people outside of the school district, internationally, globally, obviously, you're going to want to remove the check mark. And it just confirms this to make sure, in case by accident you've touched it. But we are making sure we remove it. And now in the form description, basically what I've always explained to folks that I train is make sure you describe the purpose of your form and also explain to them how you plan on using that data and finally let them know when to expect the responses to no longer be accepted or even how you might plan on sharing those. Okay, now that you have your description in, this is where you're going to go ahead and put in your f question. So let's say we have a question that says, how do you introduce, your, introduce yourself? And what you would use then is, when you think about this next line where it says help text, you could say select the most appropriate answer.
as your helper. Because what we're going to do is, as you'll notice, there's different types of questions. Text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, and let me explain this difference to you. Text box, just a small little box where you can put a few words in. Your paragraph text is, think of doing a short answer type question, you know, two or more sentences. Multiple choice. This gets confusing sometimes to folks. You will notice that there's little round circles to the left of option one. Basically what multiple choice is, is you choose one single answer, A, B, C, D, or different options that you might uh, choose. The next one is check boxes. You'll see a square now to the left of option one. This is one where you might put multiple options that can be chosen so you could have more than one answer to the single question. Choose from a list, create a drop down list. Now you don't have the circles, you don't have the squares, but it's a drop down list that would be created just like we're using to select the type of question we want. A scale. This is where you can rank, you know, rate yourself 0 to 5, 1 to 10, whatever you want, and you can make that adjustment by choosing those, the box, and then choosing the appropriate number. And your final type of question is a grid. Think of a horizontal and vertical grid where as the bar goes up or the line goes flat that gives you an idea of what you could do there. But this question is going to be multiple choice. In this line we're going to say I Okay, so now we have, I just say my first name or your next option is I introduce myself with first and last name. And we're going to require this and say done. Now you go, okay, how do I get other questions? Well, if we remember, you can go up here to the top to insert and choose your question. Or, obviously, the easiest way is just right here where it says add item. Here's the same menu as insert. So let's just say text. And we're going to ask, what is your first name? require that and say done. Now let's say no I want to change that to ask what is your first and last name. Well it's just like on the previous style you would come over here to the left hand side where you see the pencil or excuse me the right hand side and use the pencil to go into edit mode. Now we're going to add one last question and we're going to go back and say where you want to use a scale. And we're going to ask how do you rate your computer skills? We're going to leave this as a scale, and we're going to go one as being
and then finally and we'll finish up like that we're going to require that one and say done now we're going to scroll down this is what we talked about earlier as far as what people will see after they hit submit well we're going to add a little more detail to this and say thank you for completing our survey And then you could even say here, we will share them in a blog post soon. Now you'll notice it says show a link to submit other responses. That's if you want to give them a link after completing this one to go to another form and finish. But for this, we're going to hit that. And there you go. We have created our questions, our surveys. All right. In this last part of this little video, we're going to show you how to have your form shared with folks, where to get the responses, as well as how to set up a couple pages within a single spreadsheet <clears throat> to organize your survey results, as we said at the beginning, to where maybe you want to have a, one class period and another class period on separate pages using the same form or maybe you want to have uh, students, staff, teachers, adults, parents, whomever it would be, they're answering the same questions but on a different page so you can compare the numbers without their responses actually influencing your overall collection. So let's get started on that part. Under responses, Remember, make sure your check mark is showing for accepting responses because without it, it wouldn't be there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at View Live Form. Here is the form that we created. What you will find out now is it's fully interactive, even though we're just looking at it because this is your live form. How do you introduce yourself? I'll say I introduce myself with first and last name. We'll provide my name. And how do you rate your computer skills? And say submit. And there you will see your confirmation that we created. This is another great way of testing your form and making sure everything works because what you'll do is come back to your form. You'll notice now at the top I have a responses one, but yet below it the choose response to de destination has not changed. And that's what's also one of the new features that we introduced and just kind of briefly touched on earlier in the video. I'm going to go up to responses and say show responses. So now I'm seeing a summary of the responses. Here it is. So there's the first name, your computer skills, now what if something was not right? So for example, 
if we look at show summary of responses again, you'll notice that it says, how do you introduce yourself? I just say my first name or introduce myself first and last name, but you'll notice there's no response for what is your first name. So we can go back and say responses, delete all responses, and this is just a fallback to make sure everything's okay. Choose there. We'll give it a moment for responses to clear. Now you'll notice it's reset to zero. So now we can kind of go back and look through our questions. And you know what's nice is you can also reshuffle your questions. Okay, so now we have our survey. We want to go back and be able to contribute some resources now. I'm going to say here. And submit. Jump back. Now, we're going to go choose response destination, and here's the nice thing about this is you can create the spreadsheet now. You'll notice that obviously it did not create it to this point, but now we can. We're going to say create. It's setting up the spreadsheet. Now we're going to go to view responses. We're going to see the spreadsheet. Now you'll notice Dean appears this time. So I introduced myself with the first and last name as our answer. Dean and four is the skill level. But now I'm going to go up to responses. Go to change response destination. And this is where we were talking about. Now let's say I'm sending these questions out, exact same survey, to a different group of people. I can choose new, uh, the new sheet in the spreadsheet and say choose. It's going to come up with some selections for which spreadsheet. You'll notice that the one in blue, Google Forms via iPad responses, is the one we're currently in. That's the one I want. But you can notice that you could choose any of your other spreadsheets. I'm going to hit select. It's setting up the spreadsheet at the top. Once that's done, we're going to go to live form again. This time I'll just say first name. And go with a two. Hit submit. So let's see, you notice it's the same survey, same response, but when I go back to our form, see how we have a responses of two? But here's the difference. View responses. If you remember, the first one we did and showed you had introduced myself with first and last name, Dean and four. Now right up here at the top, is the form response one. And now you'll see right below it we've got I just say my first name John and two. So there you go. That's one way of being able to segregate your data. And finally just as a reminder you can use the link here at the top from your form or Back under File, if you prefer to embed, go into your and make your adjustments or just copy the code as needed. And there you go, the overview of creating Google Forms and accessing data through the Google Chrome 